Hi everyone, Stacy Weider here on behalf of Campus Mortgage with part two of a three-part video series on USDA borrower eligibility requirements. Now just a quick reminder before we get started, this video is for informational purposes only and should not be considered legal advice or used in place of USDA guidelines. Also, this video was issued on November 14, 2017, and the information contained in this video is subject to change without notice. So we've already gone over general requirements. In this video, we're going to take a look at current homeowner requirements and repayment ability. Current homeowners. So a borrower does not have to be a first time home buyer in order to do a USDA loan. However, they do need to meet all of the following requirements. They have to not be financially responsible for another agency guaranteed or direct home loan by the time the new home loan closes. The current home that they're in must no longer adequately meet their needs and the applicants will occupy the subject home or the new home as their primary residence. Applicants without sufficient resources or credit to obtain a home without the guarantee. So this goes along with the fact that um, they really, this is not for someone who would otherwise normally qualify for a conventional mortgage with maybe three or 5% down. So this is someone that um, only qualifies for the USDA mortgage or is only qualifies for a mortgage because they're able to get the down payment um, or no down payment and the guarantee assistance. Also, only one other single family home other than the subject property that they're purchasing or refinancing may be retained by the applicants. So net rental income can be used to qualify the borrower, but the consistency of the rental income must be demonstrated for at least the previous 24 months and any current lease on the home must extend 12 months beyond the loan closing. So they can't depart their home, their current home that they're in, um, and then turn it into a rental property to not include it in ratios. USDA does not allow that. Repayment ability. USDA uses um, the following ratios to determine the applicant's repayment ability. The first ratio is the PITI ratio, and the second one is total debt ratio. Um, now, USDA reserves the right to consider a calculation of a single ratio in determining repayment for the requested loan. But let's take a look at these. So monthly PITI, any HOA dues, annual fees, or other real estate assessments should not exceed 29% of the applicant's repayment income. So 29% um, typically is going to be the front end ratio. The back end ratio is gonna be calculated on the monthly PITI plus any recurring monthly debt, so the total debt, and it should not exceed 41% of the applicant's repayment. Payment. Now, certainly there are instances where you'll run this through GUS um, or your automated underwriting system, and based on compensating factors, you may get an approval even with higher ratios, but this is the general USDA guideline. Now, it's important to note that debts of non-purchasing, any non-purchasing spouse must be included in the borrower's ratios if they reside in a community property state. Obligations that don't have to be included in total debt ratio include personal income taxes, retirement accounts. So for example, if they have a 401k loan, the payment on that 401k loan would not have to be included in their total debt. Um, any savings debts, cost to commute, membership fees or unions or like organizations, child care, and any type of voluntary payments. These do not have to be included in the total debt ratio. All right, that concludes part two of this three-part video series. Thanks so much for watching. For more tips and videos, please visit campusmortgage.org to look for their weekly mortgage video tips designed for all mortgage professionals, including underwriters, processors, loan officers, closers, post-closers. Bye-bye. We'll see you in a little bit.